Hey guys, welcome back to this month's, this past month's reading wrap up. I don't know about you, but July was a bit of a weird reading month for me. It started off slow, and then in the middle of the month, I read like five books back to back. And then I ended the month by taking a whole week to read one book. I don't know what I was doing during that last week, but whatever it was, it wasn't reading apparently. Somehow, I still managed to read nine books this month, which all in all, I think is pretty good. Good job, Sarah. Before we dive into this video, I wanted to mention that if you haven't yet followed me on Instagram, you probably haven't because I've never mentioned it, but make sure to follow me at sarah.w01. I'll also have it linked in the description box down below. For the longest time, my Instagram page was pretty much my neglected middle child. I just simply used it to look at other people's posts and bookstagram content, of course. Who do you think I am? So I've never really talked about my account before because I was like, what's the point? But I'm becoming an Instagrammer. Not really, but I have done some revitalizing to my page and am definitely more active over over there now. So if you want, no pressure, but you can follow me over there and keep up to date on the shenanigans I get myself into. All right, enough said, let's dive into my July wrap up. Let's bring the books back. Whee! This month I had one two star, one 3.5 star, two four star, two 4.5 star, and three five star reads. So it was a bit all over the place. As always, I'm gonna start with my lowest it's okay, we just dropped the Spanish Love Deception, but I don't really care about that book that much. Um, <laughs> tea. As always, I'm going to start with my lowest rated reads and end with my highest rated. My two star read of the month, we're gonna quickly talk about because I did do a whole reading vlog about this book with more of my thoughts and opinions on it. But as you might already know, I ended up giving the Spanish Love Deception two stars. I felt like the author had a concept for a rom-com and then took that concept and ran with it for 400 pages without ever stopping to create depth, such as <clears throat> character development. In my opinion, any good book has a factor to it that makes it stand apart from other novels. And usually it's something you're not expecting and it's not in the synopsis. This book, on the other hand, is literally not much more than the synopsis. Y'all probably know by now the concept of this book, but basically we follow our protagonist, Catalina, who desperately needs a date to a wedding she's attending in Spain. But the problem though is no one is available except her colleague, Aaron Blackford, who unfortunately for Catalina is her arch nemesis. Obviously in the reading vlog, you can see that I did like some aspects of the book, but most of the book I found boring. I didn't care about the characters, the plot was predictable, so I'd personally skip this book, but some people are totally obsessed with it. I don't understand how. Please enlighten me if you are. Next, my 3.5 star read of the month was 14 Ways to Die by Vincent Ralph. I want to start off by saying that this felt like the generic store brand version of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Maybe that's not fair to say because some store brand versions are just as good as the name brand. So let me clarify, if this was a cereal, this would be the generic store brand version of Cheerios compared to A Good Girl's Guide to murder, which would be the tastier General Mills Cheerios. I don't know what type of GMOs they're putting in name brand Cheerios, but I literally eat that shit up. Am I two years old? It's hard to say at this point. In this book, we follow Jess, who is obsessed with catching the serial killer called the Magpie Man, who 10 years earlier murdered her mom. So to catch this killer, she signs up to be a contestant on this reality show where she live streams her daily life on YouTube. Coincidentally, I still can't figure out why her dad agreed to let her be on this reality show in the first place, because all of this sounds very dangerous to me. Since Jess is risking her life to catch this killer before she becomes his 14th victim. I don't think this is a spoiler because all like mysteries or thrillers have some sort of this aspect in them, but there's a red herring in here that really annoyed me so much. I hate it when books lead you on and then they're like, ha, just kidding. Fooled ya, back to square one. I think I would have rated this book lower if it weren't for the fact that the chapters are so short and so fast to get through. Most are two pages or less. I do love short chapters in books. I also did enjoy part in this book where the characters go on a class field trip to this retreat. It gave camp vibes that I didn't even know I wanted. This felt so similar to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder though. I even pictured Jess as Pip in my head, but the writing just did not compare in the slightest. My first four star read of the month I have here is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I actually have the mass market paperback version of the book, so it's so tiny, but this was actually perfect because I read this when I was on vacation, so this just fit so perfectly in my purse. I have heard some call this a classic. I don't know if it's technically considered one, but the writing did feel like that old English style which you typically get in classics, which made it a little bit harder to get into and understand. So that's why I ended up knocking off a star because my pet peeve is when books make me feel stupid. Okay. You know what would be a good Christmas present, birthday present? I don't know, Halloween present since that's the next major holiday. But I really need to get another camera battery because I can't for the life of me keep my camera charged. I'm literally getting a degree in digital video and cinema. You would think it wasn't going well with these actions. Where was I? The amount of rereading I had to do with this book to understand what what the author was trying to say 
pissed me off. I actually tried to read this book about a year ago and I ended up DNFing it. I can now see why though I couldn't get into it. There are also a lot of characters you follow throughout the book which made it even more confusing because I kept forgetting like who was who. So the writing definitely did take some getting used to. This book follows two people. Two people? No, 10 people. I don't know where my smarticle particles are today. This book follows 10 people who one day are invited to this infamous secluded island. And even though they don't really know who invited them, they can't pass up the opportunity to go to this mysterious secretive island and meet its owners. But once they get there and settle in at dinner, a recorded message is played that accuses each of them of having a dark secret. And then by the end of the night, one of them is dead. After that, the guests quickly realize that they are stranded on this island and the rest of them start to dwindle one by one. I love that there are so many things throughout the book that the characters and us as readers were trying to figure out, such as who invited them, how can they get off this island, who's the killer, which one of them is the next victim, and will any of them survive? It's kind of weird to say that a murder mystery was beautifully crafted, but this was. <laughs> you could really tell that the author took a lot of time beforehand to plan it all out. It's safe to say I did not end up guessing who the killer was, and I don't think you will either. It's possible, but I would be astonished if you did. My next four star read of the month was Where the Crawdads Sing by Dahlia Owens. I don't have the paperback with me because I read this on Kindle. I'll probably end up picking up the physical book sometime from like a secondhand shop because I'm a material girl. I'm not ashamed to say it. Okay, maybe I'm a little ashamed, but my excuse is I'm trying to build a library here. Hold on, hold on. Let me paint you a picture of my dream home library. <laughs> going to have floor to ceiling bookshelves filled with books organized by genre and author. I want it to have some like dark academia vibes. So I'm thinking of the color scheme being darker, warmer wood tones. In the corner, there's gonna be a big plush chair to cozy up under a blanket with and read. Hell, maybe if I'm feeling fancy, I'll throw in a coffee bar or something. That could be a vibe and make my whole library have a coffee aroma. I also want a ladder that like slides across my bookshelves. Oh my gosh, don't we all? This all sounds really expensive, so this might not happen until I'm at least 40, but mark my words, it will happen. I finally got around to reading this book though because I was on a schedule and needed to finish it before I saw the movie adaptation in theater. I actually went um, when I was on vacation with my mom, my grandma, and her friend. Such a group. I knew absolutely like zilch about this book before I started. All I really knew is that people loved it, including my mom. This is like her all-time favorite book, so sorry mom. <laughs> I ended up not loving it as much as I thought I was going to, though my expectations were probably a bit high. This is a historical fiction murder mystery that follows Kaya, a girl who is known around town as the Marsh Girl, since she lives by herself in the marsh. So she is very different from the rest of society, but for the most part, Kaya likes living in the marsh and plans on continuing her lifestyle, though eventually she develops interest in two different guys around town. The story is also due a timeline, so it does jump to the present where one of the guys Kaya was interested in is found dead. So we also follow the POV of a policeman as he tries to figure out what happened to this young man. How did he end up face planted in the marsh? My main problem with this book was that there's just too much marsh life description. If you look up the definition of flowery writing in the dictionary, this book would pop up. Don't get me wrong, the writing was beautiful, but after a certain point you get tired of reading page after page of description with no actual plot taking place. I am even someone that finds learning about marine life and estuaries interesting, so you would think I would have enjoyed this, but I needed Dahlia Owens to scale back the marsh talk about 70%. My favorite parts of the book were actually the police investigation chapters, but there were so few of them, and when we did get them, they were really short, so I was always left wanting more, which I think was the point, but it was a really annoying point. Clearly this month, a lot of books annoyed me, even my four star reads, but I did like how this book explores how abandonment affects an individual and the implication it has on one's growth and development. My first 4.5 star read of the month was The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekanen. This book follows a couple who on the outside look like the perfect couple, but we quickly learn that that's not the case because one of them has been unfaithful in their marriage. So they decide to seek out help from a therapist who is known for her unorthodox, no-fail, 10-step method. This book also follows the point of view of that therapist. Her name's Avery. And whenever Avery takes on a new client, including the so-called golden couple I just talked about, she will do whatever it takes to solve their complex therapeutic issues, even if it doesn't align with traditional therapist regulations. My girl Avery is like, fuck boundaries. I will do whatever it takes to infiltrate your life and uncover your secrets. I really enjoyed Avery's character. Her persona, she is such, she is such a bad bitch, okay? But she did kind of confuse me at some parts. 
because Avery would give off the I don't give a shit energy, but she is also clearly devoted to her clients and helping them figure out the source of their issues. Literally all I need to know about a thriller is that it has a therapist point of view in it and I will add it to my basket pronto. Oh, I took off half a star because I did feel like there's a bit of a pacing problem. A lot does happen at the end compared to the rest of the book, but I didn't really mind that because I found the earlier chapters just as engrossing. My next 4.5 star read of the month was My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. Tessa Bailey is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors because she can do no wrong. Every time I pick up one of her books, I fall in love with the characters and her writing style. She is so funny and Tessa Bailey gets me. She knows what I like and serves it to me every time on a gold platter. First, can we take a moment? Ignore the sun. We need to take a moment to talk about the concept of this book. Oh my God. This is a murder mystery rom-com. Hello, that sounds like an absolute blast. It was a blast. Am I just blind or why haven't I seen any other books like this on the market? We definitely need more murder mystery rom-coms immediately because I am addicted and I need my next fix. In this book, we follow the POVs of an energetic elementary school teacher, Taylor, and a grumpy bounty hunter, Miles. And the book starts with Taylor and her brother entering their Airbnb they booked for a relaxing vacation. But little do they know though that this vacation is gonna be far from relaxing because while Taylor's looking around the Airbnb, checking out their new crib, she opens up a closet and what does she see in there? A dead body. So Miles, the bounty hunter, gets assigned to this case to try to figure out who they killed this man in Taylor's closet. And Taylor decides that she would be the perfect candidate to help him out because she herself loves true crime podcasts. So obviously she has some stellar qualifications here, but Miles is not very happy about this prospect. He would rather get into town, solve this case solo, and then and get back to his nomad bounty hunter lifestyle. So we have a very contrasting duo in this book, but obviously they end up falling in love. Look how cute they are. I love Taylor and Miles, but I think my favorite character had to be Taylor's brother, Jude. I don't wanna spoil anything, but the reason why Taylor booked this vacation in the first place was because Jude was going through something and she thought he needed like a relaxing break. And I initially thought that this something was something completely different than it ended up being. And once I found out what it actually was, Jude immediately needed to become my favorite character. Jude and Taylor relationship was also very cute because not only were they siblings, but they were best friends. I also loved how honest Taylor and Miles were with each other and how they communicated so openly. I did think the murder mystery aspect did take a backseat to the romance, so I did wish at times that it was a bit more suspenseful, but I ended up not guessing who the killer was, so there's that. What is the lighting doing? Hello, God. Next up for my five star reads of the month, let's first talk about this book right here. I told you guys in my mid-year freakout tag that I was gonna read this book before summer ended. It happened and it was absolutely the perfect summer read. This is a duo timelines, childhood friends to lovers that follows Percy and Sam. In the present, Percy and Sam are not a thing anymore. And it has actually been more than a decade since they last spoke, but Percy still has feelings for Sam and she still deeply regrets the mistake she made that caused their falling out. So when something tragic happens that causes Percy to go back to the lakeside town she used to spend every summer at with Sam. She is understandably a bit stressed at the prospect of seeing him, the person she cannot get over and is still in love with. In the past chapters, we see the beautiful development of Sam and Percy's initial relationship, which was so cute because they met when they were like 12 or something. And then as they grow up, they slowly start to open up about their feelings for each other. But then in the present chapters, we see the messy aftermath of their relationship. So throughout the whole book, you're trying to figure out what happened in the relationship to cause it to go so wrong? And will they be able to figure out a way to make a new relationship work between them? The Lakeside Beach House vibes in this book incredible. I wish I could have read this on a beach. That would have been perfect. I really enjoyed how realistic the author made the characters. Every character has flaws in some way, except Sam's mom, Sue. She is a literal queen. And by the end of the book, I would have killed to have one of her, what, what, I don't even know, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Heritage you? No, that is not right. Whatever these things are, I've never had one, but I really want one now. I also think that this book prompts a interesting discussion about forgiveness and whether or not time can really heal all wounds because I don't think everyone would be able to look past the mistake Percy made. It definitely was some betrayal on her part. This book evokes so many different emotions such as sadness, happiness, anxiety, and even anger sometimes at the characters and their actions. Next I have here Ricochet by Krista and Becca Ritchie, the second book in the Addicted series. All I'm gonna 
gonna say for synopsis to avoid spoilers is that this follows Lo and Lily and takes place directly after Addicted to You. One thing I've really enjoyed about the Addicted series that I've seen throughout the first two books is that we not only see Lily and Lo's relationship, but we also get to know and fall in love with characters that are gonna be in the future books. I am so excited, ecstatic, to read about Rose and Connor and their relationship. I have a feeling they're gonna become my favorite couple. The only potential problem I could see someone having with Ricochet is that it is on the shorter side. It's only 250 pages, but I have so many books in my TBR, this is my TBR shelf, that I don't mind a shorter read now and then. Guess what? My camera died again. I'm not too upset though, went and made some lunch while it charged up. Let's now talk about my last five star read for the month, and that was Blood Sugar by Sasha Rothschild. I knew when I picked this book up this month that this was going straight to the top of my TBR. This book also follows a therapist. I'm telling you guys, if you put a therapist POV in a book, I will most likely pick it up. I don't know, I like to see the juxtaposition of someone a lot of people view as having their shit together, when in reality, they're human too, they make mistakes, they don't always make the right decision. But in this book, our protagonist is Ruby Simon, an animal loving therapist. And you know the phrase, I could kill you, or if I tell you, I'd have to kill you. I would have killed to have one of her. Well, Ruby has never used that phrase because she has actually killed before, three times specifically, and she has never been caught. But after her husband's sudden death, she is brought in and questioned by the police. And we know from the start that Ruby actually didn't kill her husband. In reality, she was madly in love with him. So throughout her interrogation, Ruby has to somehow convince the police that she didn't murder her husband, while also making sure that she doesn't get charged for the three murders that she did commit. Guys, this book was fantastic. It was so interesting to be in Ruby's head, a literal murderer's head. You would think you would hate Ruby, but you don't necessarily hate her because although murder should never be justified, she does have reasons for each of them. By the way, I absolutely loved Ruby's cat. That cat could single-handedly carry this whole book. He was so iconic. I also appreciated that this book brought awareness to diabetes, a disease many don't know much about or have misconceptions about. Okay, I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant here, but one thing I cannot stand is when someone casually jokes about how they can't eat something because it would give them diabetes. Like, excuse me. That's not how diabetes works. And throwing around jokes about a serious complex disease many people deal with on a daily basis is fucking callous. Someone in my immediate family actually has diabetes, so I know a thing or two about it. And I could really tell that the author took her time and really dove in to research it before writing this book. I did think though that the one person in this book who had diabetes, they were a bit strict and rigid. Like I understand they were a type one diabetic, but I don't want everyone to think that all type one diabetics are like that. Most aren't. And one part of this book, the author uses a metaphor to describe life with diabetes, and that part was just so eye-opening for readers because it perfectly encapsulated all of the turbulence that comes with diabetes. This is one of those books that made me lose all sense of time. I would sit down and be like, yeah, I'm gonna read for like 30 minutes, and then the next time I look at the clock, I'd realize two hours have passed. If you have not picked this up yet, go get yourself a copy immediately. You're welcome. No need to thank me. There we have it. That was my July wrap-up. July honestly went by so fast, and I'm kind of sad because summer is almost over. I still consider August to be part of summer though. Fall does not start for me until September. I have a good feeling about August though. It is actually August 5th when I'm filming this. I'm filming this a bit later than I really wanted to, but here we are. But I've already read two books this month, though my college will be starting up again in a couple of weeks. I love getting bombarded with schoolwork. I need to get in as much reading as I can. Let me know in the comments what you guys read in July. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It really does help me and my children out a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thank you all so much for watching. I wish I could convey how much I appreciate it. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.